Well, good morning. As a child, I loved to read fairy tales. Stories like Snow White and Cinderella and The Princess and the Pea. In those stories, there was always an evil villain who would come against the girl. I would read those stories with excitement, but my favorite part was always the fairy tale ending where they lived happily ever after. There's a book in the Bible that, though historically accurate, in many ways reminds me of a classic fairy tale. The book I'm talking about is Esther. In today's episode of Coffee and Conversation, I'd like to look at that book and see what we can learn and apply to our lives. Some of you may be familiar with the story, but I'd just like to quickly recap it for you. The plot opens with the Persian king banishing his queen Vashti and stripping her of her position because she refused to attend a dinner for the purpose of flaunting her beauty before his guest. The king's servants search the entire kingdom for the most beautiful woman to become the new queen. The girls went to live in the palace and they were groomed and pampered for several months. Then each one in turn was to spend time with the king. From that experience, he would decide which one one would become his new queen. If it was a TV show today, Esther, a poor orphan girl, is the one who gets the final rose and is selected to marry the king. But then evil rears its head for the first time when we witness Haman's attitude towards Mordecai, Esther's cousin, who has raised her from childhood as his own daughter. Haman is a high-ranking government official, and he detests Mordecai because of his refusal to bow down to him. Haman convinces the king that the Jewish people pose a security threat to the empire and should be annihilated. The king agrees and passes a law requiring that every Jew in the kingdom be put to death. But what he didn't know was that Esther was Jewish. Esther is the one book in the Bible that God's name is not mentioned, but there's no mistaking his presence as he uses Esther to prevent King Xerxes from carrying out his decree to kill all the Jewish people in the entire kingdom. Esther chooses to trust God. She realizes that she alone is in the position to help, and she willingly puts her life at risk. She meets with the king and exposes that Haman and his death plot is stopped. The Jewish people are saved and Esther remains the queen and Mordecai is offered Amon's job after the evil villain has been executed on the gallows that he had built for Mordecai. Now that's a fairy tale ending if there ever was one. Life doesn't always feel like a fairy tale, though. We all experience times that make us feel as though we're helpless characters playing out our roles in a pre-scripted tragic novel instead of a fairy tale. We may sometimes feel as though God has left us and we have no help or direction and we don't know where to turn. Well, in studying the book of Esther, I discovered some amazing truths that will help us on our journey to live in happily ever after. And the first thing that I see clearly in the book of Esther is God's providence. Do you like putting together puzzles? Well, sometimes our lives can be like a puzzle. When things happen, we don't seem to fit into what we think God's plan should be. We feel like everything in our lives is just one big mess. But what we need to remember is that we're not seeing the whole picture, but God sees the whole picture, and he has a plan to put it all together and make something very beautiful out of it. God is at work in our lives, and he has a plan. You know, the Jews must have wondered how their circumstances could ever fit into God's plan. They were facing death and the threat of annihilation. Their whole future as a nation was at risk. Esther and Mordecai may have felt that circumstances were out of control for their people. They probably thought, why couldn't God just prevent this terrible thing from happening? And maybe you felt that way at times. Sometimes we look at things that are happening in our world today and feel as if God is not in control. Perhaps things have happened to you or your family that seem out of control. Maybe you've been a victim of a crime or one of your family members has been victimized or terminal illness has struck someone that's really close to you. Even when we can't understand or see clearly how God is at work, we can trust him and know that his providential care is in our lives. 
The Jews were God's special people, and even though it may have seemed to Esther and Mordecai that their circumstances were out of control, God was at work on their behalf. And we see God's providential care all throughout the book of Esther. The second thing we see from the book of Esther is that we need to do our part. God's plan will be accomplished even if we don't participate. Mordecai said to Esther, if you choose to keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will will come from another place. Now you might be thinking, well, if God's plan is going to get done anyway, then it doesn't really matter whether I'm involved or not. And if that's your thinking, then I want to encourage you to think differently about it. The reality is God has given us the opportunity to participate in accomplishing his will. And we should be thinking, wow, how exciting. What a great opportunity to be a part of something as big as what God is doing. But we need to be willing. And Esther and Mordecai, they were willing. So let's see what they did. So what did they do? Well, one thing they did was they prayed. They cried out to God to help them. Esther and Mordecai prayed, and Queen Esther even called on all the Jewish people to pray. She realized the need for prayer, and she knew that without prayer, there was no power to defeat their enemies. They prayed, but they didn't stop there. They also fasted. In a culture like ours, where there's a McDonald's and a Wendy's and a pizza pizza on every street corner, Fasting seems out of step with the times, but scripture has so much to say about fasting and that we would be good to take it seriously. There's so much I could say about the subject of fasting, but it would be just too time consuming. So I'd just like to leave you with something that Richard Foster says in his book, Celebration of Discipline. He said that fasting can bring breakthroughs in the spiritual realm that could never be had in any other way. It is a means of God's grace and blessing that should not be neglected any longer. You know, we all need power in our lives, and fasting and prayer helps to give us the power that we need. We see in our text how God's people humbled themselves and prayed and fasted, but they were also obedient and they refused to compromise. More than anything, I believe God desires us to be obedient. God knows what's best for us. And when he tells us what to do, it's for our best. And we would be happier for obeying. Mordecai, he refused to compromise and bow down to Haman. And it seemed at first that that was what caused him all the trouble. And refusing to compromise at work or with friends can cause us some trouble because people will look at you strange. But in the long run, God will reward you if if you stand up for what's right and refuse to compromise. And that's what Esther and Mordecai did. And it's amazing to see what happened. Just look at what it says in verse 17 of chapter 8. It says, In every province and in every city to which the elect of the king edict of the king came, there was joy and gladness among the Jews with feasting and celebration, and many people of other nationalities became Jews because fear of the Jews had seized them. Wow, isn't that amazing? They had joy and gladness, and many people were converted because they saw what God had done in their lives. Their enemies were defeated, and God honored them. Amon's authority and, and property were given to Mordecai. The king let Esther and Mordecai issue a new degree that saved the Jews from destruction, and Esther remained queen. They got their fairy tale ending. Mordecai said to Esther, If you don't do it, God will use someone else to fulfill his plan and deliver his people. But who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Such a time as this. You know, we're living in a different time in our world. Things have changed in so many ways. And I believe God will use churches and people to fulfill his plan and help deliver people and bring people to himself. And if we don't do it, someone will. I don't know about you, but I want him to use me and I want him to use all of us. To me, that would just be a fairy tale ending. Now, of course, the ultimate happy ending will 
will be on the day when Jesus comes again. John in Revelation 21, 1 to 5 tells us that God will on that day wipe every tear from our eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. We can rest in the assurance that God's children will indeed live happily ever after. But until that day, God wants to live out our lives in victory over our enemy. We can have victory, but we need to recognize God's providence in our lives. We need to do our part, pray and fast, be obedient and not compromise. Then people will be converted and our enemies will be defeated. I want to challenge you this coming week to read the book of Esther again. There's so much in this short book that will bless and challenge you. Begin to look for ways that God is at work in your life. Open your eyes to what God has done and is doing and take the time to praise God for his care in your life. I want to thank you for joining me today. Take care, stay safe, and let your light shine.